Hey, so uh, can I just introduce you? Thanks for uh, dialing in today. So uh, we've got Scott McKenzie here from Buffum Thompson. He's the branch manager on the North Shore in Auckland. Uh, he's coming in just to talk about some uh, local perspectives on the property market and just sort of give us a um, sort of on the ground view of what's happening, uh, given that we're in lockdown and all sorts of crazy things are happening in the market. Um, Scott, you've got about uh, 18 sales staff, is that right? 18 licensees, so it's a mixture of salespeople and sales associates, but all licensed and, and, and working, yep. Brilliant. All right. Hey, so tell us, um, market's on lockdown at the moment. What is happening in there? Are there still sales going on? There's still listings? Yeah, yeah. So um, uh, as, as most of you all realise, January and February and most of March were, were absolutely amazing. Uh, as a business, March was our second best March ever. Uh, even with that last week going into lockdown. So the market was humming along. Uh, but last week, which was sort of a crossover between the last few days before lockdown and a few days into lockdown, uh, we only did around 25% of the sales of the week before. So it's fallen off a cliff. And this week, I imagine it'll be even less. We're just dealing now with properties where people have already been through. Um, people, as you imagine, are a bit apprehensive to buying sight unseen. So there's not a lot being sold now it's just sort of the leftover campaigns that were were running when we went into lockdown for example we've got a tender this afternoon uh, and that property is actually going to be attractive to developers who don't necessarily need to see through the property uh, and that went live the day before lockdown so there were a few people managed to drive past or get through it right before and it looks like we are going to get some tenders this afternoon for that one so there's a little bit happening but very much uh, almost fallen off a cliff really Mm, yeah, I mean, I think it's really hard to uh, check the anti-money laundering ID checks that are required. Uh, I know the banks have put a little bit of um, a lean a bit on the solicitors, but obviously they struggle to get people checked and things. So it is still possible to list uh, in this day and age. It's just a little bit harder to <laughs> get people through. Yeah, the AML one's interesting. Um, there are uh, some abilities to, to use exceptions, Um uh, sort of some temporary exceptions and permanent exceptions are the two types. Um, so we can verify people, say, over video, uh, if they hold up their passport, that sort of thing, and then we can always face-to-face -face ID it in a few weeks when we come out of lockdown. So there's yeah. some workarounds, but it just depends on, on your policy, so mm. business to business. So, yeah. so crystal ball gazing, what do you see? Uh, is it April 24th that we come off? I don't know, I can't remember. But uh, some, sometime around there, what, what do you see happening in the property market when, uh, when we're level three or, or so? Yeah, interesting one. Um, so the biggest consideration for me right now is whether we'll be able to operate at level three. Uh, so I'm really hoping that there'll be uh, some sort of um, either an industry agreement about how we operate, whether it's through the Real Estate Institute or the REA gives some guidelines, the authority, uh, or in fact, the government just come out and say, this is what you can and can't do. Um, and very hopeful that under level three, we'll be able to get people through houses, maybe maybe without open homes. Maybe we don't need open homes necessarily. Uh, and uh, maybe not so much the, the sort of attending auctions with 100 people in the room. But um, I see there being a few things, a little bit of a rush to get photographers through houses. If there's people who are wanting to sell, then uh, they might end up in a bit of a queue. So they're probably better off getting the paperwork out of the way with their salesperson now so that at least once um, once things uh, open up, they can book their photographer straight away. Mm. Um, in terms of how the market might flow, um, it's, it's going to be a lot of real wait and see and, and feeling things out. Obviously, the interest rates have come down quite a bit, but there's, uh, we're heading in for this, this recession, which is going to last two to three years, I think. I told my team at the sales meeting on Tuesday that I could sort of see things around February, March next year going absolutely crazy in property. I think there's going to be a very unsettled period for the rest of the year where we've still got the election and we don't really know um, how much of an effect the election will have on the market. I think people look at the uncertainty of the election as actually being um, uh, an easier time to deal with than what we've been through this uh, more recent time. Uh, which would be quite funny because normally that's that's the uncertain thing for people <laughs> with the election. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I don't think anyone really cares at all about the election right now. Yeah. Um, 
So I, I can sort of see um, that, that February, March period next year where there's a whole lot of money flowing in. Um, I, I did see this morning that the, the Australians have, uh, was it another 160, no, 16, 16 billion. No, 130 billion. That's right. 16% of their GDP now is, is the, the, in support packages, uh, which is quite high, which will hopefully mean they rebound quite quickly. And given that China's opening back up, hopefully us doing a lot of trade with Australia and China might allow us to recover quite quickly. Uh, that's yeah, I mean, we, we put out a poll just to see what people thought would happen with the uh, property prices uh, once we came off level four. The, um, a surprising majority of people thought the prices would uh, tank. And, uh, and I think that was around the potential for mortgagee sales, people that have, have gone out of business. And you hear Winston Peters this morning talk about 30% of businesses aren't going to be able to make it and things. I think there's a lot of money flowing in to make sure that there isn't this huge uh, rush on, on mortgagee sales, this, this huge number of mortgagee sales come up. And I, that, that sounds like what Australia's working towards as well, right? Like we don't want hundreds and hundreds of mortgagee sales coming on the market at once because that's just gonna that's just gonna tank the price isn't it mm. yeah it doesn't doesn't help anyone that yeah mm. yeah so i think the real focus around that will be will be to save people from that in any way we can mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. hey so you mentioned before um uh tenders and auctions obviously you can do tenders remotely um auctions i know you've been working on some online uh yeah there's a few solutions ability. out there so there's the there's the sort of stand up in front of the camera one where it live streams to a website and people bid, um, whether they bid through the website or over the phone and it gets relayed to the auctioneer somehow. Or there's also the sort of trade me option where people just bid straight online. And some of these technologies have been around a while and they're coming into their own now uh, for, for good reason. And so that's going to be interesting to see where that space goes. In the short term, people still need to go through properties. Uh, to be able to buy them, except yeah. unless, of course, it's you know a section or, or something uh, it doesn't require you to go through. Um, if, if someone was to list and, and hopefully sell without people coming through, then those buyers are going to build in that risk into their offer. So it's um, maybe not the best thing for people to, to sell in that environment anyway. Uh, so, But with the, the online auction and, and video streaming the auction and that, how necessary it'll be in the next couple of weeks, um, I, don't, I sort of see it being used as a just tapering off now that we're into lockdown. And for the first week or two of lockdown, it could have worked quite well. Um, going forward, uh, if people are able to attend auctions in some capacity or phone bid, then it might not be as uh, as utilised. But it is something that could be used a lot more in the future. Uh, we don't know if we're going to cycle in and out of these lockdowns, level threes and level fours and things. So um, it's definitely something to have um, as, as a tool in your kit. Yeah. So online auctions, I guess, um, we were talking before, there's a, there's a couple of issues that, that aren't necessarily relevant and um, don't show up in phone bidding, uh, things like lag on internet and things. Do you, do you know how we're getting yeah. through that? Yeah, some of them have um, you know quite pixelated uh, issues or they lag. Um, the other one is that the auctioneer standing there finds it would, does find it quite difficult to create momentum. Um, sometimes if the bid's coming sort of 10 seconds, 20 seconds after he's doing his calling, uh, so there's, it's hard to, for the auctioneer to create that momentum, but certainly it's, it's been a good solution over the last couple of weeks just to get people, um, just to give people options, uh, mm. and some of, them, some of them have sold. I've been watching a few out of Australia, and um, some of them are taking over an hour uh, wow. to, to get them sold because of the length of time it takes just to get a bid from one person to the next. Uh, so th- there's challenges, but uh, you know, great that there's these options available. Mm. Okay, rental properties. So I know Buffalo and Thompson have a major uh, rental property management portfolio. Uh, what are you seeing in that market? Are you seeing um, sort of tenants come to you and talk to you about reprieve and things? Or Yeah, for sure. And I think uh, yeah, you're right, Barfoot's is big. We've got 17,000, which is second only to Housing New Zealand in New Zealand. And uh, you know, we've, we've got a, ma- a major number of, a massive amount of resource in our support centre and, and how we can deal with the different inquiries and that that we're getting uh, what what i've enjoyed seeing throughout all of this uh is the amount of goodwill that people are, are, are putting into this and and the understanding um landlords and tenants alike are, are, are sort of sharing the the burden and understanding that it 
there's no point, not that we can evict people, but what's the point anyway if, if you can't get anyone else in there? So there's got to be a lot of understanding and working with tenants. And uh, what we have seen some tenants in the very early stages get confused by what a mortgage holiday meant and thought yeah. that if the landlord wasn't having to pay their mortgage, maybe they didn't have to pay their rent. <laughs> so mm. there's a little bit of educating that had to go on uh, in the first few days around uh, how this was going to play out. But um, no, we've seen um, some good negotiations taking place, but mostly uh, around where people can provide some sort of evidence, like a letter that says, I've lost my job or I've been asked to, to reduce to 80% and that type of thing um, does help a lot in, in these situations. Yeah, I I heard stories of um, tenants hearing that, you know, landlords couldn't kick them out. And so they just stopped their payments, not thinking that they're obviously going to have to deal with those landlords at some point when they come off level four. So it's going to be some awkward conversations there, I think, in the future. Yeah, but, um, yeah. And, and our property manager in our office, she's um, she's still working very hard from home. We don't have maintenance to do. So there's a little less income for us as a portfolio in that regard and getting out to do inspections we can't do. So we're relying on tenants to um, give us some uh, video footage and we just have a sort of a how-to list on can just check around the hot water cylinder for leaks and underneath t um, sort of waste pipes and things to make sure that um, those types of checks that we'd normally do ourselves can be done. Um, mm. And then, uh, so, so it's a little bit of a rent collection service at the moment, but it's so important to stay on top of that rent in those conversations. For example, one we had yesterday, uh, um, they were getting behind in their rent and couldn't get hold of them, couldn't get hold of them, eventually got them. And, um, and they said, oh, well, the problem for us is we normally walk up to the bank and take the cash out from one bank and then walk over and deposit it into your guy's account. Wow. <laughs> so you could just see, uh, you know, that that's become a problem for them with the lockdown so you just work with them and they're gonna um they're, they're relying on a family member to help them set up internet banking so we'll get through it mm, yeah i like to imagine a briefcase of some sort with a handcuff <laughs> handle <laughs> transporting the money somewhere there. yeah yeah and, and of course um a part of rental uh, uh the rental market is airbnbs um mm. going to be interesting to see uh those how that how that model works going forward do people want to be in a house that um you know, has had 20 other people in it this month, um, maybe not in the next three or six months while it's still fresh in their mind. Do you, do you see a lot of people either listing or going to long-term tenancies? Have they started approaching you on that or is that Yeah, we haven't, um, haven't had those conversations yet, but I, I imagine there's a lot of Airbnb owners out there that are, are nervous about, um, firstly, tourism. So if you've got a beach house, um, there's going to be much less tourism. There's going to be local tourism, of course, um, you know, and we're, Hopefully we can ourselves support that um, when we're allowed to. Uh, so there's the beach houses um, that are going to be a very interesting situation if people can't get the revenue through those. There's also the apartment market where there's a lot of Airbnbs. Um, Tony Alexander, he's been doing his newsletters and, and I noticed um, uh, last week's version was at supplement number four. Uh, he did about a whole bunch of things that will help the property market and a whole bunch of things that won't help it. Um, uh, sort of don't know how I feel about some of them, but he does touch on the <laughs> fact that the apartment market could be interesting with um, international students uh, might not be around um, as much uh, and, and then uh, the Airbnbs and the tourism and everything else. So, yeah, that, that, that will be one to watch for sure. But no, no inquiries on my side on any of that just yet. Right. But early in the, in the game. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Yeah. Hey, and finally, so commercial leases. I know it's uh, it's it's not my area, um, but I know you can sort of anecdotally talk about um, commercial leases. What are you what are you seeing in terms of reprieve for for that area? Yeah. So it uh, it comes down a little bit to which of the um, editions of the the lease agreement you've got. If you're on sort of the sixth edition, I think it is. is it, there is a clause in there that allows people some reprieve. It was developed after the Christchurch earthquake whereby if you can't get into your property um, there, there, there is an opportunity to negotiate that so we are seeing some, some negotiations take place and um, that's just anecdotally because myself I'm residential uh, but mm. I have spoken to people who have got commercial properties and um, even even in one case I heard where they weren't they didn't have that clause in their lease agreement there's still some good good negotiating taking place. Some people are amortizing that, that loss of income over a period, say the first three months of this financial year, paid out over the, the last nine months. So just spreading that burden or else uh, just while in lockdown, giving some sort of discount. 
um, provided OPEX is still paid, that type of thing. Yeah, I mean, it has to be a, uh, both sides have to win out of this, right? There can't just be a, a total one side winning, one side completely losing, or we're all going to be in a lot of trouble. Absolutely. Yeah, if you've got a commercial mm. tenant and, and they can't operate their business uh, and and they go under because they can't pay their lease, then where does that leave you as a landlord? Mm. That's right. Yeah. Pretty empty at this point. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so um, people, if they were looking to list their property, to, um, you know, that they're thinking about it in the near future, um, would they be right to talk to you guys now or when, when they come off level four or what's the... What's the yeah, timeline? I reckon, I reckon engage your salesperson now. Uh, there's a lot of things that can be done well before going on the market. Um, there's also the, the – at Buffett and Thompson, we, we have a network. Um, we're not franchised. So we also always have buyers within that network. So there's definitely people in my office who are working with buyers right now who still want to buy. Um, so just having the conversation uh, and getting, getting the property into our system just so it can be seen and able to be accessed by those people – um, it just speeds up the process for when we do come out of this. Um, like I said before, it might get you up the, the picking order a bit in terms of booking your photos in when we come out. Um, but also just having conversations around how to prepare your property for sale. Um, you could start looking at decluttering and uh, you know a bit of gardening, water blasting, any sort of maintenance you could do to the property um, while you're tinkering at home. Uh, so I, I would definitely be having the conversations. There's a lot else you can be doing in terms of... Um, if your salesperson sends you an appraisal, there'd generally be a list of properties that have sold that they base your appraisal on. You can Google those properties and have a look how big they were, whether they're north facing, and you can you can find out so much about properties online now and have a think about why they sold for those prices and how they were marketed. Um, so, so there's a lot you can be doing pre sort of level three or level two uh, and engaging your salesperson now and getting the paperwork out of the way. You can do all that over a video call or just um, you can be signing things and, and doing all that so easily now over the internet. Perfect time, eh? while everyone's at home to be doing those projects that they've uh, been putting off for yeah, <laughs> three yeah, you years. Just can't, <laughs> you can't, can't get through Bunnings at the moment, but, um, but if you've got the paint in underneath the house, certainly make use of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Brilliant. Hey, thanks for dialing in today, Scott. That was really cool to chat and getting up that. Uh, we'll uh, get you on in a couple of weeks and uh, once we're once we're level three or below again and we'll we'll see how the market's going, eh? Yeah, more than happy to. Thanks, Rupert. My Brilliant. pleasure. Thanks, mate. See ya. Cheers, guys.